Right, Johnny, that's Mike here. Thought I'd give you a little bit of a show around the has and turn, tell you what we're working on at the moment. As you can see, you probably know this is a T33 shooting star. This came from actually the French Air Force initially and it came to us from the US Air Force Museum and they've kindly let us play about with it, put it back together and restore it. As you can see, it's back together. The engine's in it. Um, we have got no plans to run it at the moment, as far as I know. <coughs> Once it's all been painted and uh, put back together, it will go across the other side and um, be displayed for the general public to come and see. As you can see, it's pretty good, Nick, considering the age of it. Hopefully um, one day you can come off, come over and have a look one day. And next thing along is there's a couple of the ground equipment we use. Um, GPUs, ground power units to um, fire up the old Jaguar, the Sepicat Jaguar, which is what this is here. Now this is fully operational, um, runs as you've seen from the videos, makes lots of noise and lots of interesting things. Um, we've had one or two troubles with it lately. The last time we tried to run it, it wouldn't start because of a, a battery fault. Um, but eventually we've got it sorted now. She's in pretty good condition considering what it was like when we first got it. It was a, a complete hulk. There was nothing in it and the guys um, all XRF Jaguar guys have basically rebuilt it, put it back together, restored it, um, gotten pretty much got everything working. It will never fly again, but she's in good ground running condition. And as you can see, the hangar is all full of <laughs> bits and stuff that we need to keep these various things going. This is one of our police cars that we have in the museum loaned to us from the guy that owns it. Um, this one had a bit of a disagreement with a deer, a big huge stag the last um, time we had the Jaguar out to try and run and um, ran into the side of it and see a nice big dent in there. A Chevy Impala I think is what it is. I'll just quick walk around the Jag so you can see what's going on. This is part, also part of our ground equipment. It's called a, a loader for loading weapons and stuff like that. That one is uh, run off a little diesel engine that operates the hydraulic side of things, but you have to push it about. But this one is what the RAF call a Wendy loader. It's basically the same thing, but it's self-propelled. Um, this one we, we bought uh, about five or six of us got together and amalgamated the cash and bought it. It's fully operational, works fine. One or two little niggly faults, but uh, she's very useful around here. This is one of the cluster bomb units that um, is on loan to us from another collector. So basically they've been, they mock at their dummy versions of the cluster bomb units. We take it off and on, off and on the aircraft from time to time, depending on what we're doing with it. As you can see, up the back of the engine, I put my torch on. You can see that reheat units in the back there. At the moment, we've got this engine door open. We've had to replace a uh, taco drive center unit which is up the bottom way up the front there tucked right up the back of the up the left hand side of the engine these engines are interesting in the fact that they're both the same they're not um, asymmetrical so left engine will fit in the right and the right engine will fit in the left but unfortunately all the sensors and what have you are on the left hand side of the engine 
So on the left hand engine, it's nice and easy to replace stuff like that. But on the right hand side of the engine, everything's fuselage side, which is a bit, makes life a bit more awkward. But as you can see, she looks pretty, pretty clean. And amongst all the other junk and detritus we have in the hangar, spare brake units, jack stands, the yellow, big yellow box things there are ground running shields for the air intakes. And there's all sorts of Jaguar bits lying about here. Over here, this big silver bird, you probably recognize it, English Electric Lightning. This one is an ex Saudi Air Force one that um, was brought back to the UK when the Saudis stopped using the Lightning. The light that was then stored at the British Aerospace factory at Rochester down in Kent and the southern part of England and um, was donated to us by British Aerospace and over the last I think it's probably 10 years they've um, the guys we call Team T because they drink a lot of tea have basically put it back together and got it pretty much operational um, no engines or anything but inside I can kind of show you the cockpit has been fully restored it's got new all the gauges and dials and stuff inside it which now is fully electrically live not really see too much in there but all the switches work the air brakes work on the back of the airframe the all the dials work so you could sit in the aircraft with moving the throttles backwards and forwards and uh, the dials on the instruments will actually move in correlation with the, the throttles which is pretty clever the guy that's done it is an ex British Air, um, British telecom engineer and he's all into these little computers and stuff so they've, um, he's restored that As you can see the wings are back on she's a big big old bird a Mac 2 first RAF aircraft that could exp exceed the um, speed of sound and level flight. Extremely, as you can see, all the undercarriage bays have been restored to an extent. Pipes and cabling filled in just to make things look right. This was all pretty heavily corroded when we got it. As you can see, the guys have done a fantastic job. The big blue plug is for um, powering the instruments and stuff up. So taken from normal electricity supply. Moving further back in the has is another loader that we've got. This one is, as you can see, is in the process of being restored. I've rebuilt the engine and got that running. And the guys are slowly rubbing it down and repairing bits that need repairing. And you see up the back of the Lightning, you see we've put two discs in the back and the petal, reheat petal units are in a uh, back, tailpipes. There's no engines in this, but we have um, hydraulic pumps and stuff in the back and dehumidifiers to keep everything nice and clean and dry and as you can see at the moment the guys have got one coat of paint on the tail and eventually it will be painted this year hopefully this will be painted into RAF colors uh, painted up as a mark six lightning and um, she'll go uh, across to the museum this year at some point in time the last aircraft we have in here is a, a Glossy Meteor. This is probably more your age of aircraft. You probably may have seen one of these here when you were <coughs> when you were here. This one's a bit of a long-term project, as you can see. It was pretty rough when we got her. We have two engines for her. The plan is, from what I understand, is it will have one engine put in 
and put into the engine nasal and the other one will be put out on display so you can see um, the type of design is a really basic old style um, gas turbine nothing complicated about it at all and this thing is the underbelly tank that's been taken off so you can restore the underside of the fuselage again these were all pretty corroded when we're done and I think the plan is to get the hydraulic side of things working so things like flaps and air brakes and and stuff like that will operate at some time we like to try and get stuff working if we can it's not easy some of it it takes a bit of ingenuity to to operate these things so hopefully uh, maybe not too not too distant future we'll um, have things up and running obviously we're gonna get lights working and stuff like that that's fairly simple stuff I think the guys uh, as you can see there's a hydraulic pump here and the guys are going to rig up some way of putting an electric motor onto this pump so we can drive this pump and have an operating hydraulic system of some description again this is more jaguar stuff we've got spare wheels and tires and stuff like that because obviously these things are getting um, pretty rare to get parts for these days in incidentally the indian air force still use the jaguar still fly as an operational aircraft in 2022 so uh, it's a slightly different version to the one that um, we have but um interesting little fact and there's the front of the meteor again that's a single seat fighter now th uh, we have got a picture of this particular aircraft at um, RF Woodbridge across the forest there and I'll just take you over to the Jaguar again and take you have a quick look in the cockpit if we can climb up yes the ladder's there we'll climb up and have a quick look inside without dropping dropping out the situation as you can see she's pretty complete inside seats fully fully there although not a live ejection seat for obvious reasons um, everything works most of the instruments work there are one or two that don't work properly but uh, and the navigation system has decided not to work anymore it did but being a 30 40 year old piece of electrical equipment that, that's been set outside for 20 30 years it's um decided to die and let the magic smoke out as they say it's sort of a bit of a overall view of the house hopefully at some point in time if i get get a chance i'll do you a video of the museum over the other side and we'll have a quick walk around and you can have a look around in the museum if there's any way you particularly like to see just let mum know and um, i'll see what i can do for you okay hope you enjoy this see you soon and take care of yourselves